call anybody else to do what I'm doing. I ain't nothing and I ain't nobody. We ain't nobody. It's just a privilege. We act like God sometimes. And we spoil God. It's part of his fault. He spoils us. Then he spoils us. But we still got to treat him right and do right by him. But remember, it's a privilege to serve the Lord. And an honor. But I want to encourage you today. The topic is called Such a Privilege. Such a a privilege. If you have a Bible, go with me to First Peter chapter two, verse nine. That's just gonna be our ground scripture. If you have a Bible, just go ahead and find that. First Peter chapter two, verse nine. And that's what we'll be discussing this morning. Such a privilege. It's good to see each and every one of you this morning. Amen. We hope something will be said that can encourage you. Along the way, when you find First Peter two nine, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That'll be our drop. And I want you to see what he is saying. And first, that's a, this is about his children. So we won't forget who we are in the Lord. Amen. Amen. First Peter two nine, and it reads, "But ye are a chosen, listen, chosen generation." A royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people. That word peculiar in the Greek means God's own. We God's own people. That ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of the what? Darkness, Darkness into his marvelous light. Verse 10 say, which in times past you were not his people, but are now the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word. Peter say, you are a chosen generation of people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation of people. A peculiar people with God's own property that ye should show forth the praises of the one that called you out of the darkness. He lifted you up out of the muck and the mire unto his marvelous light. In verse 10 he said, you were not always his people in times past, but now you are the people of God which had not had mercy in the past, but now you have obtained mercy from the Lord. So that's why I want to use for a topic today such a privilege. Now what does the word privilege mean? The word privilege means a special right. A special right. Or it could mean an immunity granted. It also could mean an immunity granted. Or available something that's only available to a particular person or a group of people. Something that is available only to a particular person or a group of people. Air Force One is dedicated only for the president. You can't get on Air Force One if you're not the president. Or the people that's supposed to protect him or accompany him when he makes his flights. So we are God's own particular people. And if nobody else should be praising the Lord, we ought to be praising the Lord. Because he chose us to praise the Lord. Consider yourself a blessed person. Consider yourself a blessed person that God will call you or handpick you to be selected to be a part of his kingdom. You don't have to do that. So consider yourself a blessed person that God handpicked or selected you to be a part of his kingdom. And not only that, then he uses us to reach those who are lost and still under the influence and power of Satan. Amen. <laughs> he had picked us. It's just a privilege. That's all it is. Because he don't have to use us. He could have sent angels to save people if he wanted to. He sent angels to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and told a lot to get out of this city and don't look back, but escape to the mountains. The angels told him. He could use the angels, but he don't want to use the angels. The angels work for us and we work for God. Amen. The angel of the Lord are encamped around about them that fear them to deliver them when we get in trouble. Yes. 
The angels minister for us. They serve us. And we're supposed to be serving God. He said, I don't want the angels to deliver people. I want people to deliver people. But I want to use the angels to protect you so nothing can interfere with your calling and your assignment. Right. But it's just a privilege to serve the Lord. Right. It's such a privilege. Watch this. Many believers today take their calling lightly as though it is something not to be of valuable. But it really is such a privilege and an honor to labor in the garden of humility and love on behalf of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Many believers today take their calling lightly as though it is not something to be of value. But it really is such a privilege and an honor to labor in the garden of humility and love on behalf of the Lord Jesus. We're doing this because of what he did for us. He loved us first, then we loved him. But it's a privilege and an honor to labor in the vineyard of love. Jesus said, many are called, but few are chosen. God called many people. He called everyone. When Christ died, that's a summons to all that who wants to be saved. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Such a privilege. But people look at being in the body of Christ as something that is not of high importance or value. But it is of high importance or value. Watch this. Many people today are privileged in a lot of areas in life. And we are proud of those privileges. Many people today are privileged in a lot of areas in their life. And we are proud of those privileges. But the greatest privilege is to be summoned and received by God because this work will go into his eternal record of grace and redemption. The greatest privilege is to be summoned by God or handpicked by God to do his will and his work because that goes into the eternal record of grace and redemption. Look to your neighbor say, he ain't going to be long, he ain't going to be long. He ain't going to be long, he ain't going to be long. We privileged, we privileged, we privileged, we privileged to live in the United States of America. Amen. Where we got fresh warning water that we take for granted. Some are so privileged, we, we even brag, I don't drink tap water. God bless you, I do. <laughs> Some people wish they had clean running Yes. Some people got to go bathe in the river, yep. taking a chance getting bit by water marks yep. or a mosquito that's carrying Zika. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we got clean running water, yes. but we don't drink tap water. If you bless and highly favored like that, that's your blessing. Right? I'm just saying, look at the things we proud of. Some of us, and the more privileged, we got special gadgets on our water faucet to clean it even more. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, Pastor drank, he'll straight out the hose. <laughs> we got infiltration systems on our water. Huh? Some of our toilets got blue water. Oh, come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. We privileged. We so privileged, we died of toilet water. So when the company come over to see my toilet bowl, privilege. But we ain't proud to serve the Lord. We proud of our early accomplishments. Huh? Some of y'all are so pretty, look like the Garden of Eden. Flowers and everything. Huh? We privilege. God could use anyone, uh -huh. but he chose us. Yes. So it's time that we be by far this business. This is a privilege to serve in the kingdom. Let's look at a few areas where people are proud of their particular privilege. Proud. But we're not proud to be in the family of God. Some people are privileged to have the ability to have children. It's a lot of women. I saw a woman on the news last night. Been waiting 12 years on her husband to have a baby. And she still didn't have one. Somebody else had to have it. 
But some of us got pri we're privileged to have babies. We don't love our children. Amen. And don't take care of our children. Okay. But it's an honor and a privilege to be able to carry a child in your womb. Yeah. In the Bible days, you can have a child, they consider you was a cursed woman. Yeah. That didn't mean she was cursed, but it just means she could not obey. Yeah. But it was an honor and a privilege, the ability to have a child. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're proud of that. That's something you should be proud of. Yeah. Some was a privilege to be married. Amen. That's a privilege. God knows you don't have to have nobody. Yeah. You don't have to have nobody to breathe, to live, and to eat. Yeah. But it's just a privilege to go to bed with somebody at night. Because yeah. the Holy Ghost will go with you if you're by yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Your husband is just a privilege. Your wife is just a privilege. Yeah. That's all it is. Right. You don't need that to function. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Some of us are privileged to be single. Right. If I can't be single. Huh? Cause when you sing, you gotta have more power than when you That's got somebody. Right. Huh? When you sing, you gotta fight the temptations. Amen. You gotta stay prayed up. But it's good to be single because you spend more time with God. But that's a privilege to be single. Got nobody tell you when you can leave and tell you when you can come home. It's a privilege. Huh? It's good on both sides of the thing. It depends where you are in life. Nobody tell you what time to come in. Texting you where you at type. <laughs> Some of us are privileged to be a certain nationality. Some of us are privileged to be a certain nationality. I thank God I'm African American. People talk about America, they talk bad about America. I got nothing bad to say about America. You talk bad about America all you want. I thank God I was born in Fifth War instead of Zimbabwe. Look to your neighbor and say, ain't no air conditioning in Zimbabwe. I can go to sing on my all the pork bones I want. In Zimbabwe, I gotta catch that cottontail rabbit. With a stick or a bone arrow. <laughs> I don't think I can eat like that. But I gotta catch my food. I'd be too tired to eat it. We privileged, I'm telling you. And we complain about the meat price. You just walk in the air conditioned building and buy all the meat you want to eat. In some world, in some nations, they still hunt for their food. Set traps and all that. What you do when you trap, when your bait on your trap is gone and you still ain't got no animal? The animal more smarter than you. It is a privilege for some of us to be born a man or to be born a woman. That's a privilege. Because God made us uniquely different. And both of them are privileges. Yes. It is a privilege to be a child today. Enjoy your childhood because you're going to get old one day. Yes. <laughs> Boy, I remember I could run all day back with her. I walked two cars and can't walk the next morning. I got to grab the ibuprofen. Children today are more blessed than when we was blessed. The knowledge and the technology that they have now. It's a blessing to be a child in 2016. Yes, yes. Say that, Pastor. Say it. So much a privilege to be a senior citizen. That means you know something. That means God been walking with you a long time. You made it this far, you can make it even further. It's a privilege to be old today. It ain't a curse. It's a blessing to be old today. That means you know something. You can help somebody with something. It's just a privilege of God that not to live, let you live to be this old. Don't complain about the aches and pain. You a blessing. God allowed you to be in this long. It's a privilege. Because somebody ain't going to make it in their 50s and their 60s. That's right. It's a privilege. That's right. It's a privilege to have our degrees. Amen. We got a higher education. That's a privilege. Because yes. God gave you the brains to get it. Yes. It's just a privilege. He didn't have to do it. He could have made you schizophrenic if he wanted to. Okay. But it's a privilege that you clothed in your right mind. It's a privilege. That's all it is. Some of us are privileged to buy a house. God bless you when you can buy your home. Use it for Jesus because every house ain't no home. Huh? If Satan running and ruling it, your house ain't no home. It's a privilege to buy a house. Everybody wants a house. Everybody wants You can't afford no house. 
Because when stuff breaking out, you got to come out your pocket. You can't call the landlord and say, my hot water heater broke. You got to fix it. <laughs> you may get what you want, but you may not want what you get. It's a responsibility coming on in the house. Amen. It's just a privilege. Look at that. just a privilege. So much a privilege to be able to buy a new car. It's just a privilege. To even have a car, you could be on Metro. You don't need a car to live. You can walk to work. You may have to get up real early. But you can walk there if you want. It's a privilege. That's all it is. It's a privilege to have a job. We complain yes. about my lunch break. Just uh -huh. It's just a privilege. You don't have to have a job. There's a lot of people looking for work right now. Yeah. Unemployed. Uh -huh. It's just a privilege. Right. Look to your neighbor and say, you get rid of clothes. Yeah. It's a privilege to be in good health. Yeah. It's just a privilege. Thank, you. Thank God you ain't on heart medicine or nothing. Thank God you can walk. Thank yeah. God you ain't handicapped. Nobody got to walk. Push you nowhere. You can make it on your own. It may be some small stuff, but you're doing it on your own. Thank God. Thank you. It's just a privilege yes. to be in good health. Yes. That's all it is a privilege. Because God don't have to let you be healthy. It's a privilege to be alive today. Yes. There's some people that left here that's looking down and wish they were still here and could do it all over again. But it's a privilege to be alive today. Yes. It's a privilege. That's all it is, a privilege. That's all it is. Yeah. But we consider serving God as not being a privilege. Yeah. And all these things I'm naming, God is behind it because when you got here, you didn't have none of it. Right. And when you leave here, you ain't going to have none of it. Right. Much as you love that house, it ain't going to heaven with you. Right. I'm sorry, but somebody going to buy it as soon as you leave here. Yeah. They're going to put it on the market. Yeah. That car ain't going to heaven with you. That woman ain't going to heaven you. are going to leave her here. Yeah. You're going up on yonder by yourself. Your children ain't going with you. You better enjoy them while you got time. Them children ain't going with you. It's a privilege to be loved. That's a privilege when somebody loves you. When God so loved the world. Some people don't have nobody to love you. But it's a privilege when somebody loves you. Don't kick at that person. Don't mistreat that person when they love you. And showing you love. That's a privilege. Everybody ain't love. I meet grumpy, grouchy people all the time on my job. You can tell there ain't nobody loving them. And you don't get no love and make you grumpy and grouchy. Huh? Because God is love. It's a privilege to be intelligent. To know that you need to wait <laughs> till the car passes before you cross the street. <laughs> Some people don't know that. <laughs> huh? It's a privilege to be independent. Can do some things without no help. I saw a lady after my job the other day. The metro bus, she missed a metro bus, had to wait an additional three hours just for the, to reschedule the bus. It's a privilege when you're independent and can do for yourself. Don't take that for granted. And the list goes on and on. I can't even name them all. But consider it just a privilege. But such a privilege we have to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. As believers, we should avoid, watch this. As believers, we should avoid falling into the trap of becoming selfish. As believers, we want to avoid falling into that trap of becoming selfish because of our privileges from the Lord. Remember that privileges are a blessing in disguise. And God does not owe us anything. And we should never feel like we deserve anything from the Lord. Yes. From life or anything other than what he desired that we would have. Right. Don't feel like God owe you nothing. He owe you nothing. He don't owe you nothing in this life or anything from this life other than what he desired to give you from the beginning. Amen. That's all he owe you. Yes, what he desired that you have. Because we were all in debt to God. But God forgave us of debt yes. by offering up his son as a sin offering to pay for our penalty, which was debt. For transgression of his law, which was dead. We all were in debt to God. God didn't sin, we sin. And the wage of sin is, is, is dead. So God offered up his son Jesus as a sin offering to pay for our debt, to pay for the penalty for us transgressing his law, which was dead. There's a man, I'm getting ready to close, in the Bible 
His name was Naaman. And he was a Gentile. And he had leprosy, which is a sort of skin cancer. But the king that he worked for had a little maid that said, I would that my Lord, if we was in Israel, the prophets of Israel would heal Naaman of his leprosy. And so when the king heard that little handmaid say that, she saw, he sent word to the king of Israel and sent Naaman to Israel to be healed of his leprosy. He sent a letter to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said, look at this man just trying to cause confusion. Who am I that I can heal this man of this leprosy? Who told him that I could do that? And Elijah said, fear not, O Lord. The Lord can heal him of his leprosy. So Naaman went to the house of Elisha. And Elisha wouldn't even go outside. He saw his servant Gehazi. Say, tell him, go dip himself into the river. And he'll be healed of his leprosy. He said, why you want me to go dip in a dirty river? Why you couldn't tell me to go dip in a clean river? As if God owed him something. And one of his servants said, my Lord, if he would have asked you to do something hard. To be healed of your leprosy, you would have done it. Just go dip yourself, my Lord. Even though the river, he wanted to be dipped in a clean, because the river that Elijah told him to go dip in was dirty. He wanted him to go tell him to go dip in a river that was in his own country that was clean. He said, go dip yourself. When he went dip himself in the river, he was healed of his leprosy, as if God owed him something. We want God to heal us, but he got to come where I'm at. Why you can't come to God? Why you can't come to the altar? We want God to deliver us, but we don't want to come to the altar. We want to lay in our bed and watch him on TV. Come to the altar. The anointing. He said, he said, come to the throne of grace and obtain mercy. Find grace to help in time and need. You can't get to the altar through no TV camera. We act like God owe us something. God don't owe me nothing. He can take it all in one day. And he can give it back in one day. But you got to meet God halfway. You got to help God help you. That's right. That's right. Name and say, why he couldn't have tell me to dip in a clean river? Why it had to be a dirty river? He died of cancer. And this is how he talked. And nevertheless, God still healed us. See what kind of God we serve? He still, he could say, you know what? I ain't going to do nothing. But the word went forth from the man of God and once the word went forth he couldn't reverse it that if you go dip God gonna hear you but his servant had to tell him my lord just do it he asked you to do something simple he did it and he was healed then he wanted to pay the preacher the preacher said it's not a time to be taking money it's not a time to be taking no money but his servant Gehazi he said shoot pastor don't know what he's doing pastor don't know what he's doing he went got the money and hid it but let me tell you something that a lot of time y'all don't know. Sometimes you take my spirit with you. I don't have to be with you to know you're in trouble. That's right. Or you're doing something you ain't got to be. You come across my face. And I know you're doing something. Yeah. 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 When we got that money hid in his house. Then went back before Elijah. Elijah said, where you been? He said, I ain't went nowhere. He started lying. He said, why did my spirit go with you then? Did you take some money from this man? That I turned down? He said, may the leprosy that was on Naaman be on you and all the generations behind you from this point out. And he got cursed. Because he felt like, he felt like he was owed that money. Since my pastor wouldn't take it, I work for my pastor, pay me. Such a privilege to serve under the man of God. Because listen, Gazazi was the servant of Elijah. But Gehazi carried the word too as the pastor anointed him. So he was just like a pastor too, even though he wasn't a pastor. But we figured working for the man of God ain't nothing. But we work for, J, uh, what's his name, J.J. Watts. We'd be glad. <laughs> huh? Well, Gehazi told him what to go do, not Elijah. And he got healed because the anointing was on his servant too. Any marriage license, read the back of it. Read the back of a marriage license. I can anoint anybody in this church to conduct marriage ceremonies as long as they come from me. Yeah. 
It's legal in the state of Texas. You don't have to be no pastor to marry nobody or no preacher. But you do have to be associated with a ministry. I can anoint anybody that I want to to do it with it in my behalf. Wow. Even the world system know this works. Amen. Just read the back of marriage life and think I'm lying. Judges and pastors can marry people in the state of Texas or people who pastors appoint. I can appoint you. Just You can only do a wedding this side weekend, no other weekend. <laughs> I'm just sharing this with you. We powerful, but we think if the church ain't nothing. It's a privilege for God to even use us. I'm closing. Sin and Life of sin. Sin and a life of sin automatically places us on death row with God. When you live in constant sin, it automatically places you on death row with God. Repentance is the only means of avoiding the death penalty. It don't matter what you're doing. You just stop and turn around. You just put your life back on track. It's that simple. God don't want to hear all the tears and all the pain you went doing. All that. Just stop it and turn around. We must turn away and receive the gift of salvation and call on the name of the Lord for our salvation and we shall be saved. Such a privilege. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Maybe somebody here today did not 